So the basic form of an account, so let's take an account by cash, the very, very basic form and a kind of a quick and dirty way to do things for accountants is called a T account. And you can see here it, re it resembles a, a T right down here. So we've got the top and then we've got the middle. So that is our big T. So if we divide up our account, say cash, which would go here, we could retitle this cash. Then any entries we make, um, to the left side of cash here, we call that a debit side. And the right side of the T account is called the credit side. So I can quickly look at any entries that may have been made. For example, we may have a hundred dollar debit that is made and we may have a fifty dollar credit that is made. That would leave us with actually a debit balance of fifty dollars because the debit side is greater than the credit side, so we would have a debit balance of $50. Now what this is saying to us, the left side here is the debit side, the right side is the credit side. So when we say debit and credit, all we mean are left and right. That's all I'm saying right now when I say debit and credit. And again, if the debits are greater than the credits, we have a debit balance. If the credits are greater than the debits, we would have a credit balance. Now this becomes particularly important when we start analyzing what type of account we have. So let me go ahead and skip down here a little bit. Don't for <laughs> something else I should mention. We always do double entry accounting, so our debits have to equal our credits for every transaction. Kind of like when we do an initial analysis and we need to keep this accounting equation in balance, one way we can do that is to ensure our debits equal our credits. So here's the, where the more confusing part of this whole process comes in. So we've got that basic accounting equation again, assets equal liabilities plus equity. Now if we draw a line like our T account down where this asset section are, you can see that assets increase with debit. So if I want to increase my cash account, I debit cash for say $100. If I want to decrease my cash account, I credit it. That is the opposite for those items on this side of the accounting equation that increase them. So liabilities increase with credits, but decrease with debits. So it works opposite the way an asset does. So I know if I have a credit to say accounts payable, I'm increasing my accounts payable by the amount of that credit. And conversely, I decrease it with a debit. The same holds true for common stock and revenues. Both of those increase our equity, so they are both increased with credits and are decreased with debits. Now, interestingly enough, dividends and expenses work like assets because they decrease our owner's equity. So they are increased with debits and decreased with credits. So when accountants handle a transaction, they're going to do a little analysis. And with that double entry accounting, they know their debits have to equal their credits. So we're going to go through quite a few examples here to hopefully kind of reinforce. And then again, as you practice your assignment and practice going through more examples, hopefully it'll start to solidify. Um, here's a little mnemonic that I teach some of my students. It's called dead coil. So the debit side increases on the debit are expenses, assets, and dividends. And then credits, which are your owner's equity, meaning your common stock, your income or revenue accounts, and your liabilities, the coil, increase with credits. May or may not help you. I think this is a great slide. You may want to print it out and have it handy for you. And the increase side is what we call the normal balance. So assets always carry a debit normal balance. That's the side that we should always have an asset should always carry that kind of balance. For example, um, it would be really hard to have a, a credit balance in equipment. How do you have negative equipment? So uh, equipment's an asset that should carry a debit balance. So here's the basic recording process. So we analyze transactions, be it from receipts or bills or whatever it might be. We record those transactions in a journal. I'm going to show you what those transactions would look like. Post that information then into a ledger, which is where we keep the account, all the accounts, and then we can prepare the financial statements. So let's come back up here to the journal. This is where we would record every transaction. This is in a chronological order, so based on date. 
and it's it's a good place because we keep all of our transactions in one location and it'll help us prevent errors so here's what a a journal is typically like a page uh, and this would just be one transaction but let me show you what it might look like here so we have a place for the date we would write the date that we're entering that particular transaction then we would record our debits and credits debits are always first then credit the credits get indented just slightly kind of parallels these two columns here we will have a debit and credit column. Now we can have more than one debit and we can have more than one credit. As long as our debits equal our credits, we're in good shape. It doesn't necessarily mean we're posting to the correct accounts, but uh, they must absolutely match. Otherwise we know we've made a mistake for sure. Then we would have an explanation of that particular journal entry and leave a space. Once we uh, do all these journal entries, we take that information and we post it into what's called a ledger. A ledger is where we keep all of our different accounts. So for an example here, we have cash was debited for $15,000. Well, then we would have a ledger account just for cash. So all the entries that impacted cash would be posted into here. And you'll see that $15,000 debit. Then we would keep a running balance, kind of like when you call to get your balance on an account like a credit card and they pull up your account and they tell you you owe us so much money. This would be where they would find that information in the ledger. You'll also see a reference column here that refers to the page number from the general journal so if we have a question we can go back to that. And You'll also see a reference here to the account number so then we know that we posted that particular entry into the cash account and into common stock. So let's look at a couple examples here. So here's a transaction. On October 1st, CR Bird invests $10,000 cash in an advertising venture to be known as Pioneer Advertising Agency. Remember, all transactions need at least two parts to it, so we need to analyze here. So the owner has invested $10,000 cash. So that means our business is going to be receiving $10,000 in cash. What kind of account is cash? It's an asset. How would we increase an asset? We would increase it with a debit. So we're going to debit cash for $10,000. Now in exchange for his invest investment, Mr. Bird is going to get something. He's going to get stock. So we would go ahead and credit his ownership interest in the company. Remember credits to um, our equity accounts, our stock and our capital accounts are credits. So we debit cash for $10,000 and we would credit common stock for $10,000. Remember that nice little indent? I don't even have to look. I know that's a credit. We've got our explanation and then we enter the amounts. You can also see the basic analysis here that's analysis that's going on. Let's do one more of these. On October 1st, office equipment costing $5,000 is purchased by signing a three-month 12% $5,000 note payable. Again, what's happening? Office equipment costing $5,000 is purchased. Well, if we have to um, pay $5,000 cash, we would credit cash. But that isn't the case here because we're signing a three-month 12% note payable. So our liabilities are going to go up by $5,000. The way we increase liabilities is with a credit. In exchange for that equipment, we sign the liability. So we're going to bring assets into the business, office equipment. $5,000. Debit office equipment, $5,000. Credit notes payable, $5,000. And that's exactly what you see we've done here in our journal. Let me um, scroll down a little bit. We could also analyze transactions um, in this format. So the debits and credits is how accounts do things. Now to kind of explain the process of increasing and decreasing various accounts, I think your book asks you to use a, a horizontal type method and I'll show you what that might look like. So dividends of $500 are paid to shareholders. Well anytime we pay out something we know cash is going to be affected. In order to decrease cash which is an asset we must credit it. And um, what else is going to happen here? Our dividends are actually going to increase by $500. But remember dividends decrease our equity so they, um, in order to increase our dividends, we will debit it. Debit dividends, credit cash, but the impact here would be transaction eight. I skipped a few. You can go through your slideshow to see the rest. 
So we credit cash $500, and they have here um, a subtraction of dividends, remember, because that actually decreases our equity. But that would uh, be a debit to dividends. So here's that horizontal method. We just expand that basic accounting equation when we take into account increases or decreases in those particular accounts. And from here, we could actually prepare the financial statements. What goes on our income statement are our revenues and expenses, 3000 minus that 8,000, which we've got here. Don't forget your header for month ended December 31st. Net income is $2,200. That's gonna carry over into our statement of stockholders equity and our statement of retained earnings. Remember that net income. Beginning balance for a new company would be zero plus net income minus those 500 in dividends. Gives you your ending retained earnings balance, $1,700. That amount is going to carry over onto our balance sheet. So we will see $1,700 listed for retained earnings on our balance sheet, along with cash supplies and equipment that we calculated and our other liabilities, accounts payable, notes payable, and common stock. And then we can prepare the statement of cash flows from that information as well. So hopefully that gives you a brief overview of the uh, accounting process